Hello everybody, welcome to another daily dose of game news and all that good stuff and as always uh, I also publish on Rumble, on the blogger site and on Patreon for extra support and any kind of updates usually I go about on Twitter X um, usually regarding uh, live streams but again uh, when I can I will let everybody know a more proper scheduling regarding uh, live streams um and later today we'll get another midnight suns episode again i'll be doing um to reiterate uh six days per week so uh, through monday to saturday uh, i've got plenty of um or at least enough uh, backlog uh, episodes to do that scheduling uh i'm having a blast playing this game so far so uh that's that um and again um any kind of updates I will let everybody know accordingly uh, when I have something new to say. Uh, but yeah, I think basically that's it. Uh, just a quick reminder, got all the complete gameplay series here on the main page of the channel if you want to check out any a game that you, might interest you. Um, let's go to the news. Uh, I watched this video from uh, Moore's Last Dead uh, regarding some internal uh, leaks that he got uh, for the RDNA4 GPUs, uh, specifically the uh, uh, so now at least they are mentioning at this moment the 8800 XT GPU. And again, uh, taking into account if uh, uh, if the leaks information are uh, anything to, to go by uh, or if they are really uh, that close in terms of claiming the performance, I think we the AMD might have a. a like a best seller, let's say, on the middle range, um, given that uh, the the RDNA4 will not have any kind of IN GPUs there. Um, but yeah, it seems very interesting. Uh, supposedly, the, this GPU might come by the end of this year, uh, which uh, taking into account that uh, the 5000 uh, series from NVIDIA uh, supposedly will only be starting to launch uh, like early next year maybe we get the 5080 or 5090 uh, very late this year which is not something that uh, this uh, RDNA 4 GPU is aiming to compete with in terms of performance uh, price to performance uh, yeah and given that the probable competition which is the 5700 uh, RTX 5700 from NVIDIA might only come, I don't know, February, March. Uh, if the GPU from AMD is launched, I don't know, October, something like that, close to the festivity season there, uh, they might get uh, like at least a good decent amount of months of not having like new GPU competition, let's say, uh, given that this is still trying to... Um, I don't know, uh, go about and be in terms of rasterization, uh, try to trade bulls with a, with a 4080 and in terms of rasterized performance uh, around the 4070 Ti, uh, which is pretty good. Uh, it's, I think even the 4070 Ti Super is better than the 7900 XTX in terms of uh, richest performance, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but yeah, in terms of the days ra uh, rate traced, uh, it seemingly they uh, managed to increase the rate traced thingies there per compute unit, um, which is uh, pretty good. Even though it only got 64 compute units, um, if the boost clock frequency could hit around 3.2 gigahertz, which is a lot. Um, and the 7900 XTX has around uh, I'm not. Uh, I'm not sure. Ninety compute units at least around that. Um, but yeah, uh, again, this uh, this GPU is not aiming to to, to compete with the 7900 XX in terms of rasterization, uh, given that the XX is uh, basically trading blows with the 4080 Super. Yeah, Super. Uh, it, it excels a little bit, uh, like five percent or something like that, than the 4080 per se. So. The, supposedly this 8800 XT will be a little bit lower with the 4080 but trading blows in some scenarios in some games um, but yeah and of course um, 16 gigabytes of GTDR6 so the non-X version uh, mainly because I think it's uh, um, around 256 bit memory bus I, I don't think the X version uh, 
of this uh, GGDR6, the X doesn't take advantage, uh, or the the memory bus will not take advantage of the the X variant. So that's why uh, they are sticking with this. And supposedly it's got a, a rating power of around 280 watts, which is uh, relatively low. Um, yeah. Uh, again, this is the information, and the most important thing is the pricing, uh, between 500 to 600 dollars. Again, even if it is around 600 dollars, um, it's around the same price that the 7900 XT, if not mistaken, at this uh, price point, and it's almost uh, half of the 4080 Super, uh, which supposedly the MSRP is 1000 dollars, so it's a uh, trying to aim to compete with the 4080 which is supposedly around 900 or something like that or uh, the 4080 super is not a huge leap in terms of performance from the 4080 non super um i think we might see a, a, a winning gpu again taking in, uh, in account if all this uh, information is as it is given that it is a, a linked information according to this is uh, inside amd itself so it's not an aib thing that has some kind of um, hurt and uh, information again we have to take it with a grain of salt there but uh, given that uh, if this information is near um, uh, of what the gpu will be I think we got a, a kind of a winner there in the kind of a middle range competing between the uh, $600 uh, GPU thing. Uh, uh, I think it's uh, the same price as the 4070 Ti Super. I think it's, it's still over around that price point and beating that uh, that GPU uh, at the same price point, I think it might be a good option. And I think, if not mistaken, there is no... Um, reference card everything is coming from aib uh it's all board partners uh designed there uh even though i think it might i think uh, some basic uh configuration might have like a reference cooler per se uh, but the amd will not sell this uh through their own website from my if not mistaken that's my uh, what i can remember for the video here you can watch the video it's uh, i think it's around maximum 20 minutes uh, but yeah, very interesting stuff there. Um, I'm quite interested to see how this goes. Um, and we might have an idea how uh, well this GPU performs, taking into account the RDNA 4 technology, how uh, RDNA 5 might perform in terms of, at least in terms of performance. Um, I don't know, uh, because again, uh, the high end GPUs for this uh, RDNA 4 uh will not come out because i from again there is no official information but the the the, the leaks and the rumors that we heard was the rd r d thing they were trying to get around like making a, a multi ccd kind of a thing there multi-chip thing for the high end of the rdna for they had some r d uh complications and they prefer not to delay this gpu and skip entirely the high end part so they can focus uh, this uh, situation on the rdna5 i think they are going to try and, and still uh, reach like a multi-chip situation there on the gpu side of things on the on the high end of rdna5 uh, we'll have to wait and see how that goes hopefully they will not butcher the this launch uh, if it comes this year because again zen5 is not being a good launch uh, again a lot of kind of misleading numbers here again they, they need to and even other uh, cpus that they've been launching the the, the 5900 xt uh, am4 uh, or zen free cpu with misleading numbers there again stick it with the numbers even if you cherry pick don't cherry pick to the point that it's completely absurd trying to believe your own numbers um, yeah, hopefully the, we get start getting some better marketing for the products there or less misleading marketing for the products that are be launching because, um, yeah, uh, hopefully this RDNA4 might be something that we, people might be excited for. And taking into account that information, uh, again, there is an interview here with uh, uh, Tom, uh, oh my God, the, it's a uh, uh, Intel fellow, uh, Thomas Peterson. Uh, this is coming from directly from Intel regarding Battlemage. Um, 
e GPUs also. Uh, again, supposedly again, they are maintaining the same um, uh, talking points, let's say. Uh, they are going to offer up 50% of beliefs in terms of performance and feature loads of architectural changes uh, while utilizing a solid so uh, software framework established with Alchemist Ship. Again, they're talking about the driver stuff there, if not mistaken. He also stated that uh, the GPUs, the Battle Mage ones, will be larger and bigger, uh, bigger configuration that their integrated offerings in Luna Lake uh, SOC, uh, because we are already seeing this technology being used on some APU stuff. Even though again, it's uh, downscale to a point that it's not being compared, cannot be compared to something um, in the lines of uh, discrete GPU stuff there. Um, yeah, uh, supposedly bigger, uh, bigger, better, larger configuration with faster memory subsystem, bigger caches, and all the rest of it, and maybe even different clocks and different power envelopes, of course. But the fundamental building block, which is the XE2 core, is going to be the same. Um, supposedly, their engine is very, very busy improving our Arc GPU uh, to where we are now ready to take our second crack with Battle Mage. Hopefully, yes, given all the um, issues that Intel is being having as a company overall. Uh, hopefully they can at least have some uh, positive uh, thing happening to them uh, on the discrete GPU thing. I, I think it will be good because it is uh, was a, they didn't did a perfect landing with the with the Alchemist GPUs there. Uh, but hopefully they can improve and entice a little bit more interest and bring some more competition on the middle range of the GPU stuff there, uh, hopefully, uh, with this one. But uh, again, uh, we'll have to wait and see to a certain degree. Uh, but yeah, uh, again, uh, we'll see how, how this goes. Uh, got again the, the board here, the, the, the Excel file thingy here. Uh, with expected performance and a kind of a roadmap to a certain degree. Again, hopefully this will um, improve on what we already have uh, regarding uh, Alchemist, improving the sense that, again, supposedly they were trying to get their high-end uh, high uh, battle mage to be also competitive with around 4080 kind of performance there. Hopefully we can get that and hopefully they can be competitive on the price also and again then we got uh, thrown into the mix the 8800 xts uh, this new battle mage gpus then we got all the the, the 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 nvidia stuff there hopefully they can fight each other and bring better price to performance of overall on the lineups and and final consumer will take advantage of this of course uh, hopefully we can get afterwards more information more specific information in terms of planned uh, launches uh, because again from the article I didn't see any kind of thing that they're trying to when they are going to want to launch this one it's already been uh, delayed at least uh, I think they were trying to already been launched supposedly uh, but yeah we'll have to wait and see if we get when we got more information regarding this uh, regarding gaming news we got again another delay for uh, Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2 again supposedly now is going to launch uh, in the first half of next year we'll have to wait and see again supposedly they are taking this opportunity to continue to polish the game and probably uh, try to get around and uh, introduce and take in account some feedback that they've been having from their own development updates there and from playtesting from uh, uh, all of that try to i don't know tweak around introducing uh, or modifying some systems that they had there again and a lot of it supposedly is for polishing also so again i to a certain extent my overall sentiment is i prefer the game to be delayed at least a couple of months or more if needed be and and for them to for the developers to have time to polish the game properly and to launch the game in a prop, uh, manually fashion than to just launch the the the, the game uh to that uh, promised uh, launch date and then they have a butter, uh, butchered launch which first impressions still uh, uh, has a lot of uh, weight regarding game launches if you play a game and it doesn't perform that good people stop playing and probably will never play that again uh, even if the game is updated you get some cases that manage to overcome that situation 
uh, but again, it's uh, like a cyberpunk situation or even a No Man's Sky situation. We got to I, I profile game, uh, one profile game, cyberpunk. Again, a lot of it was dependent on that, and they managed to keep their work and launching updates to improve little by little. But it took a while, and I think if the game was launched uh, in the state that they promised, I think they the sales would ramp up even more. Uh, regarding that game and then we got No Man's Sky uh, it, it took a, a, a big journey from 2016 and till now uh, from all the updates I think now the game is more in line with their uh, first vision when they wanted to launch the game but yeah it took, took a while there um, they managed to recoup but uh, from these two exceptions we got the rule when games don't launch that well usually they don't sell that well even in their lifetime of uh, supposedly being uh, profitable uh, but yeah hopefully uh, even though this uh, game had some um, troubled uh, development hell let's say because the, it um, it was announced uh, in 2019 uh, it was initially hand over to art suit labs with a 2020 release date uh, but then in the meantime it was shifted to the chinese room which is the, the developer at the moment uh, with four years basically of delay in 2024 and now we are getting i, I think it's not the first time that they um they delay the game i, I think we are on this uh, track of delaying this game for a while now uh, but again it's i think it's also what happened by the fact that again when you have a development team on uh, with a certain vision for the project and then basically uh, almost at the finish line you just uh, shut down the game and transfer that to a completely different development uh, developer team uh, then you got a lot of stuff going on uh, the vision might be a little bit different the interpretation of the vision might completely be uh, not what they intended there but yeah Hopefully this game, I'm interested in this game because again, Vampire Games and I think the first game here is a very well received game, even though it's an older game, 2000, early 2000s, 2004 I think if not mistaken the first game, so it's been almost 20 years or so since the, the, the prequel of this uh, series has been launched and people are waiting for this one because I think it's a very good RPG from what I understand. Um, with Gamescom, you got uh, uh, another trailer from the first Berserker Kazan. This is kind of a deep dive trailer. Uh, it's a four minute trailer where you go about a little bit on the basic mechanics, uh, the stamina combat, the stances, the, the, the what you can use. And then he, they go about between the dual wielding uh, to a great sword and to a lance there. Kind of just a little bit of show off what, uh, what can be done there. Uh, very interesting. Again, I'm uh, uh, I'm interested in this game. Uh, I'm keeping tabs on it to see uh, how it develops and see if it is a good launch. Um, they're going to have um, a, a closed beta, I think, between October 11th and 20. Um, hopefully, it will serve to fine tune some balancing issues that might have at this moment in time. But yeah, the, the game seems pretty good. Uh, different, completely different art style. Uh, very sh cell shaded kind of a look there. Uh, which is interesting uh, and again as long as the gameplay is fluid and in balance uh, i think this is going to be a pretty good game um, got also some phantom blade zero gameplay i only found this on the game spot eight minutes they go about between three bosses also uh, again this uh, and they go about also different weapons and how they use i think this is an amalgamation of uh, certain uh, at least it seems similar the the bosses are uh, basically i think we already saw the these three bosses not mistaken at least two of them i know which is this first one in this area and then the second one which is near a big tree and then the third one i think it's inside a monastery or something like that um yeah um i think it's kind of amalgamation what they already launched so it's eight minutes going throughout these three bosses again uh, very fast paced combat again this is also a chinese developer um, yeah, very interesting what they, they, they're going about here. Seems pretty fluid. I didn't see any kind of hiccups or kind of uh, performance issues uh, from the footage that we saw. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I'm pretty interesting in this game also. I think uh, if all fares well, it's going to be a pretty good launch also. 
uh, then got also this game that caught my attention, Lost in Random, The Eternal Die. It's kind of a roguelike kind of a game. Uh, this is um, kind of a spiritual sequel, uh, sequel sorry, of Lost in Random game. Um, uh, this one takes an approach more like fast-paced roguelike kind of a, a thing there because I think the previous game was not this. Uh, I'm not sure exactly. I tried to, to check. It seems more kind of RPG-ish in the sense, more story-driven, while, while this one is going to focus more on roguelite and got the, the die thing here with the, a lot of random aspects there. Again, it's a basically a roguelike. Seems interesting the way they went about it on the art style. Uh, but yeah, uh, I will wish list it and keep my eyes and, and see how, how good this game is when it launches. Um, but yeah, I will leave the Steam page uh, in the description. As all the games that I've been mentioning, I'll leave uh, the Steam page uh, in the description uh, uh, below the article that I'm referring to here. And then lastly, we got the Stone of Madness uh, launches early 20, 2025. Sorry. Uh, supposedly it's a real-time tactical stealth game set in the 18th century Spanish monastery. Uh, again, it's kind of a, a jailbreak or prison break kind of a game there. Very interesting also, very hand-drawn kind of graphics there. Uh, you got a lot of uh, day and night time cycles of what you should be doing or trying to approach uh, things between planning, gathering resources and then uh, do the escape itself it seems. Um, this is from the same, if not mistaken, um, I think it's the same publisher. I'm not sure if it is the same developer of Planet of Lana. I think it's the same at least publisher. So Planet of Lana is, seems to be a pretty good game. Uh, and this one is from the same publisher. That's why I, I mentioned this. And again, I will leave the Steam page in the description so you can check this game out. And with all that, I will just skip for gaming deals. Uh, oh my god, I completely forgot. There is the... Um, uh, oh, I completely forgot to open the page. The um, Epic Game Store, it, it has the the Callisto protocol now. I will leave the that on the gaming deal section of the description. I will leave the page there. It's already free to be claimed. Uh, the Callisto protocol if you want to try it out. Uh, but on Steam, we got Jusan, 35% off. Uh, we got Lords of the Fallen, uh, the Deluxe Edition is now 50% off. Uh, we got 70% off Void Busters. This game has a stamp of approval from my end. Uh, I did a gameplay series on this one. If you want to check out what kind of game it is, and it, it is a game for you, just check my first couple episodes of that series and you have a good sense of what this game is all about. Uh, we got also Blasphemous, 75% uh, off, and you got a demo to try for yourself and see if it's something that you want to take a chance there. Uh, we got and then Nino Kuni, Wrath of the White Witch, remastered version, 85% uh, off here. On GOG, we got The Darkest Dungeon, 85% off, this is a 7th edition, and then you got the Ancestral Edition, which has all the playable DLC characters and the such, and I think some uh, dungeons there for you uh, but yeah it, it, this is a very meaty uh, kind of a game there you, you you will you will spend a lot of time here and i think it's a pretty good one um and then finally we got tomb raider game of the year edition got all the dlc associated with the gotti version uh for 80 percent off and again uh GOG doesn't have any shenanigans with drm especially uh, especially uh with activation or online connection to play no none of this uh, shenanigans uh, but yeah basically this is it for today i will wrap up with a plug on my patreon for extra support uh this extra support is more in line for me to get um uh better storage solutions so i can have backups of backups of stuff that i do for my clients and of course some extra space for the videos that i do for the channel and with all that said hope you have a full day and i will see you in the next one so until then Let me master out.